Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And I'd like to introduce you to a, a very special guest. He's a documentary fil- filmmaker. Um, my notes just had to pause right there. He, he has a documentary called Flatten the Curve and the Mechanical Realm. And he also has a podcast. It's Helios Psychosis Psychos. Podcast. Vika Draziv. How's it going, brother? Hey, Josh. How are you doing, brother? It's a pleasure to be here on Josh Monday Podcast. You know, we have been uh, waiting for this from a long time. And I really want to apologize to you for that rescheduled, brother. You know, these people play with the time and all these hours. And it really confuses things up, you know. So, yeah. Uh, it- it's all good. And you know what? And especially because uh, our time difference, you know, and it's it's very hard to line up. And like I said, I'm a podcast host and I have a uh, man. I've dealt with it where it's a where it's a Saturday night and I tell somebody 5 a.m. And then uh, it changes that night. So and then I'm like, I hope they know. And it's like, you know, I know how it is, bro. And you know what? Honestly, it's all good, bro. I got 174 episodes now. So I've been through a lot of different stuff. And you know, what? it's all love, brother, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm still waiting for some of my friends from a year that we are trying to work out, you know, but you know, the things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it happened because you made it more of a priority and we're like, cool. And we we're getting a hold of each other. And you know what? God works in, in beautiful ways, bro. So, yeah, man, I just want to first off say, man, thank you for your work. Um, I, And I also I, I love the uh, the debate that you had with MC Tune uh, because you guys were very cordial. And I like the fact that you were uh, the way that you spoke. You were kind of relaxed. You're very relaxed, bro. And I think you did an amazing job, bro. I really love that. That's what really that's the first time I actually I watched Flatten the Curve before I actually saw you do the debate. So I already knew about you, but I didn't know that that was you debating. Does that make sense? (laughs) Oh, yeah, brother. that was my real uh, first debate live debate with a person, you know, so I yeah, I'm quite quite glad. You know, so and, and and messages like that also from you really inspire inspire you, right? That you're not like that people could really resonate. Like, yeah, he didn't have nothing, brother. He was just throwing out words, right? That were literally at points. Yeah, I think you were. I think he even said in the when in the debate, I really like you because there's so many debates I've seen on on flat Earth. I mean, I've watched a ton of them. You know, I watch them all the time because I like to study uh, people's uh, style and the way that they do things. And like Witsit, he does a great job. And all these different guys are out there doing a great job. And um, I, I I basically debate from a biblical cosmology point of view, so I'm a little different. But um, I think that he, I'm used to seeing so many different things. And, and a lot of it ends up becoming the same where people bring the same subjects up. And I think you brought new uh, subjects up that he was not used to. And I think that was, that was awesome, man. I just want to give you your props there, brother. Good job on that, man. <laughs> Continue Thanks, to do brother. it. Continue to do it. I know you have a lot in your head and you've done a lot of research. So that's that's how I am with the with the Bible and biblical cosmology. So you can pull a lot of stuff from different questions. And and I thought that was cool, man. But um, I think it's interesting, bro. It's called heliopsychosis, right? So, um, you know, helios, people got to understand it, it's actually a Greek sun god, right? So we got a heliocentric. It's a sun god centric universe or centric solar system. And people got to understand that soul is also a god, right? So even even saying solar system, people might just be like, oh, no, that's just the Spanish word for soul. But they're, they're using that for a reason. They want to give pay homage to uh, different gods. Now, I, I know you're not Christian, but I, I, I'm Christian. So I do believe that, you know, you're never going to see like Yahweh centered universe or you're never going to see like Jesus centered universe. You're going to see always like a Greek sun god or some type of pagan worship pagan for me i'm not not for everybody but and um and then i I was debating ozian and uh he brought up another thing bro an important point he told me well what if the van allen radiation belt is the firmament right and i told him uh well god in the bible put the moon sun and the stars in the firmament so that would have to mean that your van allen radiation belt is across every galaxy and all that stuff he goes well let me look it up he goes, do you know what the Van Allen radiation belt is actually called? And I said, what is it? He said, a Helios sphere. So I'm like, oh, wow. So they're basically saying it's a sun god is protecting us from the rays of the sun, right? <laughs> so just stuff like that, bro. Is just, It just uh, fascinates me. Oh, yeah, brother. The, if we really see, it's the, it's the giver of life, right? Why is Christ represented as a sun, 
because he is the giver of light in this in this reality that we are living in so what they have done is literally hijacked it to themselves right yeah. Yeah. and make it into a different as you say solar system right yeah. because because of that reason they can come up with all their bs with all their fake pseudoscience around that yeah their yeah. whole their whole universe is based around that lie but we as geocentric for earth is also really important the sun because that is the one which makes the first cycle of the day uh -huh. right along with the moon so yes. it's important for our existence for the plants for the nature for the animals everything that exists in this realm is required by that light electric light and the magnetic from the moon right so yes. yeah definitely brother they they just twist things so people don't really get it you know we are i i'm not against the sun right i call it the heliopsychosis because you know it's kind of a psychosis because now we are at a point that everything can be seen or verified by anybody about any knowledge that exists about mm. the cosmology geography science right but the people don't want to see yes right so this is kind of convert into a psychosis <laughs> i love it bro i love the name when i saw it i loved it and uh this is also very important what you just brought up bro because when it comes to when you know, i believe the creator is, is is yahweh you know when it comes to the bible for example you have no excuses because you can look up the Bible in Greek, Hebrew, Spanish, all different translations. You can look it up what the exact Greek word meant, the exact Hebrew word meant. You can find out exactly what every word in the Bible means if you if you took the time to do it. So we have no excuses. Also, all the other knowledge that you're talking about, you could backdate. You can look up a library back in 1948, 1942. You can look up all these newspapers, whatever you want to re research. It's there. But what they do to us, uh, Vika, now right now you're off grid, so it's a little different. But what they do, it's, it's, I know you're still a busy guy, but they just they, they try to stack us up with so much work and everything so that when you do find a rabbit hole and you're trying to dig and dig and dig, it's like they try to put more and more emphasis on you working and doing all the, you know, the stuff like the, I'd call it like slave labor and not give you the time. You know what I mean? So. It's like a really a, a balance in life that you have to take. Now, I'm blessed because my job is um, I'm driving around all day, basically going to different well sites and I have my headphones in. So I get to get blessed with, you know, documentaries like yourself and, uh, you know, both documentaries that you have and like, you know, stuff like where I could just research all day, take all that research and, and basically put it into a podcast. Right. Oh, yeah, brother. If you see the higher purpose, as you say, right, the Christ is shining through you. To dig in and expand on this brother this is real truth seeking right that is going to help in the future generation yeah. to dissect the lies from the truth brother so and it's the truth nothing can deny it right so what we are doing is just saying the word of the whoever is our creator is just shining through and trying so that the people understand that we have been lied to in many different ways right and as you say they want us to be weakened in the weekend right because yeah. and the majority don't even have time to even think uh, to get the daily bread on their table yeah yeah masses yeah. right so forget about thinking the world is flat round or they are trying to people are living day to day if they would if they would be freaking uh, alive tomorrow the situation in majority of the world right You're right yeah. even in even in the uh, developed world the situation is psychologically financially spiritually is totally been uh, like shaked up that there, there is no way of salvation brother yes and uh here's an important thing that you just brought up and and and, it, and it's come that god kind of put on my heart what did the devil do uh, in the Bible, he waited for Jesus to be at his weakest point, and then he came and attacked spiritually to try to get him to sin and to and to and tempt him. So that could be the the point, you know, like people that are in other countries that are that are working twelve to fifteen hours a day. My wife is Thai and Filipino, so I go there. I, I meet people in Thailand. They're working six days a week, twelve or thirteen or fourteen hours a day. Uh, some people get paid ten dollars U.S. dollars a day, and you're literally just—that's all you're whole consumed with—is just trying to make your next meal. 
And uh, yeah, bro, I really agree with that, man. And, and the devil waits to get you at your weakest point, And that's what they're doing constantly is trying to bring you to that weakest point. And spiritually, it breaks you. And it, and it's, um, but I mean, for me, you know, I, I'm just happy to have, you know, the Lord and have Jesus and, and, and bring us out of that. I, I was actually a slave to drugs at one time, slave to alcohol at one time uh, before I joined the military and before I got saved. And I understand how it is to, you know, just just be strug. I mean, a total struggle, man, being homeless and everything, you know, for about six weeks or six months, sorry, six months of my life. So not, I don't know how it is to struggle in another country where there's no assistance. That's the thing in Thailand, there's no government assistance. There's no yeah. Medicare, there's no health. So if you're struggling, you're just going to struggle, you know, you got to depend on God and to get your next meal, you know, and uh, you're right, bro. That's a very good point. I'm over here in California. I <laughs> exactly brother to adding to what you say i bet you have learned the most in those struggle time in those darkest time than ever in your life amen to that right? and i appreciate the birds singing i appreciate the clouds i appreciate god i appreciate the food that i eat the water i drink everything, everything. that i have i i appreciate so much and i and i thank god for it you know because yeah. i know how it is to not have it to not even have the water you want to drink <laughs> you know what i mean exactly people <laughs> need to explore you know, get away from the comfort and see the world, right? And then people realize we all are the same. We are doing the same, right? We are trying to fi uh, find out the same truth, right? Connect to the divine, right? And life everywhere you go uh, uh, is a kind of a struggle in, in a different way. You know, you might be blessed in some other way, but there's always something that the yes. creator makes you like. You have to be here in this illusion to be you know entertained <laughs> right so and i think absolutely. it's like i think he is like a potter like the bible says and he's basically shaping you and forming you into in, into getting to heaven right they want he wants to make if, if you are saved or if you want to go that route if you want to keep falling off the thing and he's just like trying to shape you and you keep falling off hey that's up to you but i think he forms you and shapes you you know because you know when you get to heaven you know i believe it, you're it's sinless right so he's just basically trying to get you to sin less and less and learn and trials and tribulations and the devil is tempting why god is just testing and getting you to to form you into that proper shape to make it right so i i you know and and i do believe that we, we it's by faith you know i do believe that but you know you still gotta you gotta you know walk the walk and talk the talk and that's what he's trying to get you ready for so uh one thing i wanted to uh bring up i i heard in your documentary uh, it was it was talking about like the planets, right? Like uh, with the in the mechanical realm in in particular. And uh, one thing I noticed in the Bible, brother, uh, they're called wandering stars, right? They're not called planets, first of all. And God never ever in the Bible uh, says that Earth is a wandering star. It's always fixed and movable, stationary. Now those planets are wandering because they're doing different um, uh, orbits, if you, you want to say, or different movements than. Than the stars so what do, what do you think about that bro oh yeah but the stars are there for the sign for us to ap appreciate his beauty yeah. right appreciate the mystery that it is even though we think we know a lot about these luminaries but we don't know shit really you know <laughs> because but we feel that resonance and attachment to that creation mm -hmm. which keeps us alive you know what is this place right Oh yeah, brother. These and and the simplicity and the beauty of this sacred design that he had made, the intelligent design of this creator, tells us that it's like there's a designer, there's a creator. We are not random, right? And we see that, brother, day to day, even around us and above us. So for luminaries, for me, it's the most important. The luminaries to improving that the Earth is not a globe, as yeah. you mentioned, right? It, it's geocentric what we can feel and see what is moving and what is not moving right it's we don't have to be a, a rocket scientist or a academic or intelligent to see uh, and what our senses what we perceive right yeah. yes not the numbers and the formulas yeah absolutely and, and uh also uh yeah you go outside and your god-given senses um everything that you're taught is inverted from exactly what, you know, the creator says in the Bible, you talked about it's for science. Yeah. It's for science for seasons. Uh, it's, it's to actually, they're actually created to light up the earth, which is interesting. So they're not made to light up 
uh, Andromeda and all these different galaxies and everything out there, like they try to say, <laughs> they're actually made to light up the earth. And they're made specially for us because God loves us, right? And he, he made it for us, like, like you said. Now, we don't want to just be worshiping them. <laughs> we want to worship the creator. You know what I mean? We don't want to worship the created. But we do. They're there for signs, for seasons, like for feast, for for different things. People don't realize that. They look up to the stars and they're like, well, that's 4.4 light years away. That's 24 trillion miles away. That doesn't matter. But God made that for us for for because we're special, right? That's that's they taking out that special um part of us, you know. And uh even in the Bible planets, uh it's called planets. Uh it's it's a false teacher operating without moral compass, exploiting their aimless people, talking about the planets. What are, that what's what they call. So um, and the actual root word, it's uh, objectively fraudulent, subjectively straying from orthodoxy, deceit to deceive delusion. So these things are actually making a different path than what the stars are making now. And sometimes in the Bible as well, bro, these things are called angels, stars. And uh, what is your thoughts on that, brother? Oh, yeah, absolutely, brother. I think they are the angels in a way, because what are they doing? They don't do anything what the... There's a law of luminaries, right? No, these laws never change because it was created by the creator. They are doing their job, what the creator made them to do, to do their things, to do their cycles. They cannot do more. They cannot do less, right? And the angles do, uh, how do you say, influence us on a daily basis, right? Mm -hmm. The sun, when it comes out, when the moon is out, right we don't feel it or we don't some people don't connect it but even if you want to you know that's the reason we have sundays mondays tuesday for mars right everything is so encoded this astrology and these luminaries are so encoded right even if you speak about the bible what is maseroth that's going to be the luminaries and that's going to be the yeah exactly the, exactly uh, so, yeah exactly so i think they just have relation the same they are there for us so we are also there for them, right? So there will have to be some kind of exchange of energy, right? Every day is not the same, right? We know when it's cloudy, we are not very, we have a different mentality, right? When it's sunny and it's good day, right? So starting from that small, so even the, for example, the moon requires the plants and us also, right? Is required for, to take the nutrients from the roots to all it's the plant and the moon helps in doing that right and the sun and right so in that way the animals also connect so we also have a connection to the nature right they, yeah. they call the lunatics right or uh, so if we really dig in that's what all cosmology is about about these heavens but i get you brother but we have to love everything that the creator have created of course even though even though there might be information that this could be this or this could be that, yeah. you know, we have to go with our senses and our feeling, how we feel about it, right? Yeah. So I think astrology, apart from astronomy, it's no magic science or, you know, it's what the laws have been. I think the mathematics invented because of those luminaries. Newton and Kepler didn't invent any uh principia or mathematics the sky had been doing maths for thousands of years even before these bozos were born yeah all right and that's how timekeeping is done that's how everything is kept into check right so we don't just lose what the hell is happening all right and we know how is the nature through this sun and moon and all the luminaries this earth this creator can destroy us the creator really don't need to come down to destroy us, right? If we are becoming a problem for this, this mother nature, yeah. it, it has the possibility even to, you know, storms, you know, when the earth, uh, when we know when the earth moves, when there are storms, <laughs> right? And a big wave comes in, we, know, and we could be wiped out in a moment, right? So yeah. Like, so the flood, we have like to... the flood, basically, like the flood, right? Exactly. So, exactly. so the windows of heaven were basically it's a it's the uh the fountains of the great deep were broken, so the water comes up. So Noah's Ark would actually be lifted up at that point. The windows of heaven were open, which I believe is the firmament open, the waters from above came down, and also it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, so it, it was 15 cubits above the highest mountain. So 
it can happen. And even if the, in the Bible, when you talk about the prehistoric uh, flood uh, people that were here, there was stuff happening where angels were coming down, speaking to humans, right? And actually having sex with women and having, you know, gigantes or, or Nephilim and giants and all that stuff, bro. So there was a lot of stuff happening uh, back then. Now, what, what I think is interesting is the ancients or like Noah for or, uh, uh, Mo Moses, for example, the Bible says he spoke to the Lord face to face, mouth to mouth. So we're getting information firsthand. Now, what happens throughout time is that information is there, and, and I believe it's in the Bible, and then also there's different texts you know that out there that people read. Now, that information is, is there. That information is flat, fixed, and movable with the firmament, right? Now, as you go down the line, you know, 6,000 years later or 4,000 years later from Genesis, basically, it's going to change to something totally different. So if you get somebody in an accident scene, do you want to ask the person that was just there watching it? Or do you want to ask the person that's been told time and time and time again, 4,000 years later about that accident? So that is going to change. And look at the, look what happens. And I believe that it's a, not a, um, I believe it's going to be a supernatural change. I believe that they're getting their information from, uh, from doing occult practices. That's why you see all these people that came out, like the scientists that are supposedly famous. Uh, they're all, they all have Freemason lodges named after them. They also all, I think they got their information, not from a scientific, but like the Emerald tablets and, and, and something that is supernatural as well, that is inverted from what the Bible says and inverted from what it originally was. Right. Exactly. Brother. But we don't know that the earth is very mysterious. So anything possibility of inversing and reversing yeah, is happen. possible. Yeah. Right. It could be other way. It could be another way. Right. So we have to, as a, as a truth seeker, be really open mind. The more you question yourself, the more truth you're going to get, brother. Yes. This is the thing. We don't have to be afraid to look in the truth because what is the truth? It will get you more deeper to what it is. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree, brother. These, these people have been controlling this earth for hundreds of years with their fake globe, right? So it's going to be difficult for the people to get away from this. And they twist a lot of information. We know about everything, about geography, about cosmology, about science, about health, about uh, psychology, about spirituality. They twist a lot in doing that. So it's really difficult for people to filter everything out, brother. Yes. So and it starts and then what they what do they do you know and, and god says to come to the bible like a child right so come come to him like a child right because you're you're innocent and you're you're ready to receive the information instead of coming to him like an adult where you've been indoctrinated and him having to peel away all these onion layers to get to the you again right the the, the innocent person you were at that when you first started so they hit you super early uh, you know, in, in here in America, like in, you know, when you're five and they get, they hit you with the globe, the planets, all this different indoctrination. And then by the time you get, you hit maybe eighth grade or ninth grade, which are about 13 or 14, you're, you're learning about evolution. You're learning about a big bang and they're, and they're actually teaching it here. I don't know about in any other countries. I'm, I'm pretty sure as fact, they don't teach you that it's a big bang theory or, or it's an evolution theory. They're teaching you it as, as, as fact. And the amount of time that they, they teach it as fact. And then you go to college and it gets even deeper ingrained into your system and your, and your DNA almost. So by the time you do pick up the Bible or you do listen to, you know, heliopsychosis podcast or my podcast or anything about, you know, the true earth, you, you, there's so many layers that we have to try to peel away to get to that person again when they first started in school, you know? Exactly, brother. And we have to be, as we say to Globers, right? They're not very open-minded. They're not ready for change. But whatever we teach, we have to first apply to ourselves, brother. Mm. You know, this so is that so is true, the thing. Bro. So once we apply to self, so we know how to <laughs> dissect it, right? And and this is the thing, brother. Uh, as you know, that I have nothing to do with Christianity, but I have studied Christianity, Christianity also. I have studied all the cosmologies, you know, more or less. My take is that all they are all are saying the same thing. You see, they're all designs, their books, they all are saying earth is geocentric in different way, right? Yeah. The north say they represent as the tree of life with different heavens, you yeah. know, and the roots, the hell, right? They all are trying to say the same thing. So what I always say, 
is that, and this is the thing, it helps that all cosmology is saying this in the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Vedics, the Slavics, the Mayans, all have a geocentric stationary earth uh, cosmology and their creation story. They all sound different. They all involve the same things, the gods, the giants, the formation of the earth, the sun, the moon. Mm -hmm. So they all are the same. And I think same as they support each other. Yeah. All right. History. So I always, history. exactly. Because they want to say, oh, these people are, this is all fantasy. This is all mythology. No, no. Uh, all the other cosmology supports Bible and Bible supports all the cosmology. Yeah. That is what I see as because the real core information and truth is from that one creator. Yeah. That is saying what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if we see what is Solomon temple, you know about the Solomon temple, right? Yeah, I do. What is the Solomon temple? If you see is the soul and the moon, which is the sun and the moon, right? It's literally telling you there, right? What is it? If you see the Solomon temple, it's like a whole human body, right? And it's the sun and the moon. So it's literally every cosmology, including the Bible, it's also saying about this, is to find the Christ within, right? It's like the 33 words, I for sure you might have heard, heard that, right? The anointment is the rising, the oil within, right? The, the, the Jesus getting crucified, right? Uh, the anointed one as above, so below be the Leo, right? Everything is so interconnected with the stars and the human anatomy and that spiritual light within, right? For me, the cross, what it symbolizes, the right and the left, the polarities, the three are, when you say now the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, what is the Holy Trinity? The, the feminine and the masculine, when combines together, that when it goes straight to the creator, that is the meaning of the cross. So when you find that balance of the, feminine and the masculine that is when you reach the creator that is the real supposed meaning of the cross right and also apart from that the christ within like the sounds also are important right the light the, everything around was created for us to heal right you could go on but if you have yeah yeah add... it's okay it's okay it's okay so yeah so um it's it's interesting stuff and like i said man we're we're, we're open to information so it's all good and um i think um yeah i think it gets interesting man and and, and what was happening uh what was happening though, I do believe is, is, uh, is it all does support each other. And I think that's amazing points, man. So I think that, uh, in, even in the Bible, they were able to speak to angels and, you know, and like I said, Moses was speaking to God, the prophets have vision and dreams from the creator. Right. So what's happening is all that information is there. And, and I don't believe that that's, uh, Moses's cosmology or that's, uh, you know, Isaiah's or Ezekiel's cosmology, that's actually God's cosmology. And he's teaching you what he did day by day, biblically. And so now we're taking information from people that have lived on the earth for 45, 50 years, 60 years, and acting like they know exactly what happened. You know, they say 13.6 billion years ago, and they act <laughs> like it's like they know for sure, hundred percent. So it's a exactly. lot of delusion and deceit. A lot of, uh, you know, basically that word in the Bible, you know, the, the planets, <laughs> it's a lot of that. That's going why, on. yeah, but that's why it's really, that's it's why it's wild. Imp <laughs> exactly. That's why it's important to verify it by yourself because what was Moses happening? What was Moses hallucinating? Was Enoch hallucinating? Was Isaiah hallucinating when he met the angels or he was, ha or they were having visions, visions by whatever mean by whatever way, but they were having visions where people are a lot till today follow those commandments, right? Yeah. But it came in form of vision, right? So we it have to understand. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, most, so, yeah. so what it means is that everybody is capable of having those visions and see God and feel God. Yeah, we don't yeah. need to. Yeah. So we don't need to really need anything in life other than your yourself with the inner world and with the creator. You have possibility to, to reach him. 
and see things and and converse with him yeah right and get those knowledge or downloads right they say tablets from a cloud right sounds very technical sound very technological right <laughs> but it's the truth right so yeah just that we have we all can and should start looking for god within and that way we're going to find the whole his creation and everything right everything that exists in this plane in this realm is created by him yes. right and everything is part of his divinity and we share this realm with everybody that exists every kind of race religion political or whatever is there is the badge that people want to give to us humans because under this we all are the same uh, and i think that we should connect to the personal god within because that's where it it expands and knows and i really as i said i love all cosmology the beauty i see in everything i see the message right so it's yeah amazing yeah it's amazing god is great brother so can you talk a little about the mechanical realm about the i can't say the word i don't know why it's it's i had it written anti-kitra but... mechanism <laughs> thank you it's, di it's <laughs> difficult to pronounce so yeah talk a little bit about that bro so people know uh that that's that's very important i think it's interesting you know i think you brought it up in the debate and i watched that i watched your documentary can you talk a little bit about that for for a little bit oh yeah uh, another way of the proof of intelligent design we are we all supposed to be a part of this great mechanism that is created by this divine like a, a divine watch right if you want to call it right so everything that functions apart from the luminaries to us to the north pole in the center so we all are part of this mechanism even we as a as a individuals a humans animals birds insects they are are kind of robots uh how do you say mechanic uh organic robots right we need to function as right even though we are organic so that's a small mechanism to the to the whole universe or the realm is like a huge mechanism which fit, works together as one being as one uh, entity or earth or mother right nature so the uh, the antikythera mechanism is a device which was uh found a few hundred years ago, which is supposed to be made 2,000 years ago, it's a scientific instrument called cosmograph, right? The Antikythera mechanism is just a Greek version, but it's a scientific instrument called cosmograph. And what it does, it helps to see in real time what the sky is doing. The position of each of the every luminary, sun and moon, going around the North Pole and every other luminaries in real time and the constellation and the eclipses and the equinoxes, the, how do you say, the lunar solar eclipses, the solar cycle, all kind of mathematics and observation and calculation can be done in real time and in the future. So this is a scientific instrument, right? And which is supposed to be our model, our flat earth model, geocentric stationary earth model which is supposed to be 2000 years old and nobody can deny that reality that we had 2000 years ago, a gear technology machine, which is telling us in real time, what is the sky is doing. Also in Joshua, it is mentioned about he using a star machine to locate his brother. Hmm. Right. So yeah. Interesting. The th so basically like, uh, yeah. So, and this has no, obviously no battery, no electric, no plug-in, anything like that. <laughs> no actual computer, like not, not like a, uh, but man, that is, that's amazing, dude. So, and uh, it, it's on a geocentric uh, model and it can make predictions, which blast all the stuff that people say all the time. Like your models can't make predictions. I hear that all the time. But if just can't, can't do math, they can't make prediction. That's what they say the whole time. Because all they have is graphs and math to show you. Because I could do this, bro. I do water math and at my work. I could do reverse math pretty easy, and I could I could basically make it, uh, you know, I could go one way or the other way. I could reverse reverse engineer it as well, right? And that's that's what I do believe happened, right? So uh, people don't understand that you could just reverse math it, right? And 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 go back or forward, you know. And it's it's not explained in physical reality. So 
Um, I like that. So, and and does that that thing is is uh, it's like a gear that 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 they turned and 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 basically they could see basically take tell time and signs and seasons and all that stuff basically is what you're saying exactly the we can take as a we can conceptualize as a as a watch right a basic watch turns like with three hands with our minute and uh so what it's doing is doing gear calculations gear ratio three gears doing this thing so i'm like uh, the antiquity mechanism got 30 gears and it's telling you apart from the sun moon and the luminary is telling you everything the position the eclipses right so it's almost represents our flat earth model this is uh this is the and what is the thing? These people have been using this analog machine for hundreds of years to tell their fake calculations. They are taking all the calculations of Soros cycle, the eclipses, the position of the luminaries, the alignments, everything they predict, they predict from this machine, right? Mm. You can go to any star map or star sites on, on Google right now and look for it. So these are like digital antiquitra mechanism telling you with the North Pole in the center and the luminaries moving around them in real time positions. Even when the eclipse happened a few days ago, it was telling you exactly what were the luminaries, where were they, right, in real time. And the globals don't have that. They claim a lot, but they don't have that to show us that the sun is in the center and everything else is moving. They claim, they do a lot of claims, but they will not show us one place, one site, one machine or one even digital model that is really doing in real time what the hell they are trying to tell us. Yeah. But the geocentric version, even in digital, you can find now, you can go to any sky map site on Google and you will see the North Pole is the central axis and everything else moving around them, including their heliocentric sun, right? Nobody can deny this. Anybody can go to a, a site like there are hundreds of sites like Stellvision, Right, it tells you the show you the sky map. So, what is a sky map? A sky map, because why is a map? Because it's been mapped because it's so precise. Because we are now wobbling in the space for hundreds and thousands of miles to have that precise sky map, which works as a wheel above us. You can print this sky map, you can put in your location, it will tell you exactly where you are, all the luminaries. Same like Stellarium, but a 2D map. That's the real Antikythera mechanism, but a digital form. Right. This is real calculation, real mathematics. Right. No pseudoscience, which can be observable in real time and you can predict the future. Yeah. Observable. That's what we see. Right. We're seeing the sun move. We're seeing the moon move. We're, we're feeling stationary. <laughs> we're seeing the stars move and people don't get it. But uh, anyways, what? OK. Also, I had a question for what's your thoughts on uh, the firmament? Do you believe that it does connect to the earth? Are you more of a extra land uh, firmament is flat, uh, waters above, maybe some other type of medium? What's your thoughts on that, brother? I, I feel like the earth around it could be a shell, right? Maybe, but not very near as Antarctica or, you know, I believe in extra lands because there are many cosmologies speak about these lands and realms, not only horizontal, but also up and down. A lot of cosmologies speak about this, right? And some of the distances in this cosmology is given that even our imagination is not able to imagine how far are these boundaries, if you want to call it, right? So absolutely, I believe in extra lands, extra, not extraterrestrial for me, like, you know, but <laughs> there could be a lot of hybrid of everything. You know, we think we are the pinnacle of technology, right? As this antiquated mechanism shows that there's a missing... 1400 years missing technology so imagine what these people could have or the other races that exist could have and still right so even for us maybe it's magic even 50 years ago doing this would have felt magic yeah right so imagine what these people could have so absolutely i believe in extra land extra people uh, mutants hybrids uh mix uh, humanoids uh other beings uh, darker below or you know, reptilians or celestial beings, God, everything is possible in this realm. Everything. And I believe in it. And, and I believe that it might be a covered shell, right? To the outer limits, because there are cosmology we speak about this, right? We have to be, if we are underwater, as the Bible also says, yeah. if we have all water above, 
you know how much pressure is required to hold that water if that's yeah. physical water above that dome has to be hundreds of miles thick yeah yeah to support that water it's interesting brother and um yeah i agree and and like i said the water's above are do you believe that uh well i believe that sheol or hell is below or beneath or in the earth there's a lot of stuff in the bible about the underworld and it talks about jesus descending into the earth and then us sending to heaven right so going down and up now what people don't realize is on the globe uh constantly moving uh you know that what is what is up you know honestly what's up bro like like if god if god you know up on something like this that's up and that's down on a globe that's moving and constantly, what is up? There's se several things in the Bible about, I, you know, uh, Ezekiel and Ezekiel. Yeah, well, Ezekiel will talk about going up as well. Yeah, Paul talks about going up to the third heaven. Uh, we also have um, Enoch talking about going up to heaven. Elijah, up to heaven. Jesus ascending up to heaven. Everybody talks about Jacob, heaven being yeah. up. And as, a, and as a child, where would you think heaven is located? Up. <laughs> Where do you think hell is located? As a child, we look up, right? We are all <laughs> trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, they were... Yeah, go ahead, brother. No, no, no. I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead, bro. Oh, yeah. They don't want us to believe our senses, brother. In yeah. their magic ball theory, it's because they don't want us to. We know we feel it up and down. That's why we have level, right? The earth, have uh, the year, we have liquid. That's how we know what is up and down. You spin somebody for two minutes, they're going to be rigging, you know, going crazy and dizzy because that's how we perceive that the gyro works the same way it's up and down the creation is very beautiful brother even if you see in some of the bible thing they show you that uh like a gyroscope with the eye the the offenheim one oh, yeah. of the angels is literally yeah. telling you the three the dimensional and how right if you see a ball a snow globe have you seen those uh how do you call them that's compass in water yeah. in a ball and if you move that it's always staying level below because yeah. that's up and down if we see the earth we could see uh, conceptualize in that way uh, a huge ball with water with the land and no problem you try to move it the uh, the land is always going to be down with water and all the luminaries in that inside there right the stars whatever so the whole thing works as a gyroscope that's a minuscule version of this great design all right, that you, you can, it's not turning, it's not going upside down. Yeah, yeah, and, and every, yeah, like you said, bro, my wife has motion sickness. So basically, if I go into the car and she's reading her phone or reading something, and as soon as I start moving, she automatically feels like she gets sick. I take her on a cruise ship, moving up and down, any type of movement. She's like, ah, babe, I'm feeling kind of sick right now. I'm feeling weird, but she could sit on my lawn and read a book, no problem. Why would that be? Her body knows when she's in motion and she and it knows when she's at rest. I don't feel motion sickness, dude. I've been in the military. I've been I've been on ships. I don't yeah. even whatever, bro. I could do whatever. But my wife has very sensitive to that. So how is it that she's able to put her feet up on my lawn, read a book, no problem if we're supposedly moving a thousand miles an hour, sixty six thousand six hundred miles an hour, and then chasing the sun at five hundred twenty five thousand miles an hour. Her body knows exactly what you said, bro. That's a, I like the way you explain it. I explain it like non-scientific. You explain it very scientific where you're talking about the ears and stuff. So I love that, bro. We're bouncing off each other here. But think about that, guys. How is that possible if someone has motion sickness to sit there and do everything that they're able to do? No problem. And what what is it? It's an inverted version. Everything that your God-given senses is telling you, they're telling you totally opposite and, and they want you to believe in this gigantic theory, that, you know, instead of believing in the truth, which is right there, bro. Great way exactly. of exactly. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, brother. And also, also the, the animals and the birds, right? The birds don't curve. The birds don't fly in curve. They fly up or on different direction, but they're never doing any curve around anything, right? They're not going to so fly then, in a straight line and hit the curb. <laughs> so and also when so, they do chemtrails too bro like they're doing chemtrails exactly. throughout the sky we see it through california throughout united states throughout all these different places and you see that the chemtrail is is straight how long can they go straight without actually hitting the curve you would be able to see them curving 
And, uh, you know, we have perception or perspective in, in, in seeing certain ways. But, man, I, I think it's just absolutely fascinating. And um, I think what's happening, too, brother, I know you probably noticed this, too, is we find out a truth. It comes out. We bring it out on, on a debate. We bring it out on podcasts. People, were, people are bringing out truths. And soon as they bring out a truth that, that gets claimed and then everybody sees and they're like, whoa, this can't. Basically, damage control comes in, and you got an astrophysicist coming in, acting like he doesn't watch any flat Earth podcasts or anything about flat Earth, and he and he raises the bar or the field goal post a little further, and says, "Oh no, Man. this is what happened." And uh, for the for the visionary perspective angle, they you know they got refraction right, and uh, that that and I said Michael Snellis, I think his name is Snell's Law. What's interesting is he actually has in Antarctica, he has a, uh, a giant, um, he has not an island, but a glacier named after him. If you look at Antarctica and, and you look at these certain names like Rothschild Island and all these Except different Shana, things, yeah. yeah, what you're seeing is the people that made all these things possible for the globe, a lot of islands are named after him. A lot of lodges are named after him, you know, Freemason lodges and all these different, you know, uh, occult things right so i think it gets interesting but do, are you noticing that too as well bro every time we do find something they raise the bar further right oh yeah brother that's what is the ai is all about that is we are fighting the ai already mm, yeah the bots the misinformation the dice the the twisting you know this is what we are going through right now that that's why so much of haywire and confusion between the truthers and this because they have the both sides and they are like manipulating the information creating the confusion right we are finding the algorithms that's an ai we don't mm. have to fight fight the robots if we want to fight the ai we have to already start doing now because that's the algorithm we have to fight through because they will try to suppress it they will try to twist it right because they are listening everything, every bite, every video. It's automatically AI is filtering, trying to create contra arguments, right? That's so true, bro. Absolutely, brother. And and they'll hit your and and then us as a podcast host and and you, you as a documentary filmmaker, they're they're also set, I think, to to comment on your video and do something to throw you off course and make you feel some type of way. You know, bring your uh your positive energy and, and your and your fire they want to put that fire out so oh, then you're yeah. you're feeling like a you're fighting with this person all day online that doesn't even doesn't even exactly. care bro automatically <laughs> automatically when you put something up they're automatically saying no that's not true and then you take your time and energy i mean i i don't i, I basically try to uh i try to tell them like if, if you feel like it's some type of way like that you know i love you no problem it's all in love but if you want to I don't I don't debate over over comments. If you want to debate a subject or come come on my show, you gladly come on my show. Never get they never hit me back. They don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, brother, because they are not for that. The best part, like I'll tell you already, brother, like avoid the negative comments, avoid the negative energy, avoid the yeah, take sure. in what's the what the people who resonate with you and it will help you, right? Because you are putting out what you have to say through your podcast right and different shows you are doing so you don't have to repeat and say to the people again if they're not ready to listen there might be other people who might be ready to listen right so go for the more, more positive right you have to see that there are a lot of as i mentioned there is a lot of there they might some not be even be real people yeah yeah i agree so so <laughs> take it as a grain of salt know that we can see the passion in you brother for the truth to take the truth ahead, keep that going and don't let the light, right, affect. Because as I always, now I'm mentioning right now, like if you want to be the light, you have to be, you will be surrounded by darkness, brother. Oh, for sure, bro. Yeah. This is where the light is needed. Just show you, just shine your light and keep moving. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. one who needs to, if the seeds need to germinate, will germinate and the ones which are going to be, like rotten will stay in the ground, bro. So. <laughs> there you go. That's what Jesus says too, you know. So, well, hey man, I think we had a great conversation. Uh, did Did you have any questions for me at all? Because I know that we haven't really connected before. Do you have anything for me that you would like to know, or like you know, um, at all? Yeah, Is brother. It? You said you are a veteran. Uh, you were you flew things. You were into many different things. Yeah, 
did you connect also the dot there when you were into those profession well, with stuff? Dude, right before, bro, I right before I got in the military, I I was I was studying uh Sandy Hook and 9/11 deeply, so I was like, ah, should I do this? But what I did is I wanted to strip away my identity in a way and build myself up physically, spiritually, mentally and physically and that's what that's what happened. God was like, you know, you're going to go in. And uh the thing that happened though as I'm as I'm serving in the in the army, I'm overseas in in Kuwait and I'm and and I have a, a my old boss hits me up and sends me information about uh why we're even in Afghanistan and why we're even in Iraq. So I'm I'm awake my awakening is happening as I'm there. We're there for, you know, uh, wow. opium. we're there for, so it's definitely happening and it, it all came together and God was like, let me just strip everything out of you and build you back up because obviously I've had so much, um, you know, I, I was into just different stuff, man, too much partying, too much. I was a rap artist, right? So I'm like on stage rapping, trying to get women and I, and I just needed to get all that out of me. I got married, oh. got saved by God. And, and, and literally just changed my whole life. And it was, it was beautiful. And, and I was, uh, where, where I was flying in helicopters, stuff like that, because what I w was doing was fueling helicopters for, uh, for the military. So if the helicopters would land, but we would, we would get taken on them sometimes and have a good time. But we were basically stationed in a spot. Helicopter comes in, you go up there, you feel it, you take it out. You got to keep doing all these different tests and all that of the fuel. And I learned the fuel side. And I also learned the water side in the military. And I took that in the civilian world and became a, a water operator. So I, I love it. I think that God did some tremendous things. And uh, one thing happened out there when I was in Kuwait deployed that made it so that uh, everything is possible podcast wise and, and even truther wise. Um, I, Catalyst, I, yeah. I did a, a talent show there. Um, and, and this is actually, I'm, I'm based in uh, Camp Arif, John, and there's Camp Beering. And that's actually a whole different base. But I know the chaplain and he asked me, Hey, everybody tells me that you rap. Do you want to come over to this other base and do a talent show? I tell them, uh, yeah, I'll do that. No problem. So I wrote this rap up, but it was like a Christian mixed with the army rap. And I went over there and performed and I won the whole talent show. So I took that nice. song. It was called Always Have a Gun on Me. I took that song and I basically uh, put it into a song and I started making an album and uh, Christian uh, and conspiracy rap. And one of my songs came out called Signs of Things to Come. And I, and I got invited on podcast. And, and and they said, hey, you should start your own podcast. Legit Bat uh, podcast uh, really, really helped me out. And uh, his name is Joe. He's, he's an amazing host. And he's, he's like, hey, bro, get get this uh, gear, get this, get this, and start a show. And, and that's how everything came together, brother. God is so great. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, brother. This is a thing where we see that we are creative also. We see a lot of people... Uh, like us who's not on into through seeking you know we are also connected with music with art right uh, so yeah because uh, we feel it we are trying to use the two hemisphere of the brain right yeah. we're not trying to be too uh, rational or too spiritual like the balance is always good which helps us right i love music brother yeah definitely we're gonna listen to some of your raps send me my <laughs> way and yeah and also like in a week or two uh, two weeks there's gonna i'm really i'll be releasing uh not mine one one of a friend like you is a rocker oh, right cool. and he uh flat earth rock song with biblical it's called biblical earth oh, you're gonna love it, it. all right he's he's gonna be on my show on the 26th brandon yeah brandon oh yeah, yeah. i love that so song I he sent it to me already but yeah he's gonna be on the show uh he's gonna release it on um i actually sent it to dave weiss so that he could he could he could put it out on the flat earth uh, app and stuff so yeah, we've been uh, uh, in touch maybe a few months already. Yeah. Right. And we spoke about that. If uh, we, I would share, I would release it on all my platforms. Right. He was, I think he was the first one he approached was, I think, to me awesome. for doing it. Yeah. So if you see on my pages on Facebook, you're going to see already the, the promos. I already released two promos uh, also on, uh, I think, on Instagram also. So in okay. 22nd or something, we're going to, I'll, he will be on my podcast and we're going to be releasing the, the song, the biblical art with the new version with the edited one. So yeah, we're definitely looking forward for that too, brother. So yeah, brother, come up with new stuff also, write a new song, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Everyone's asking me to do that. I, I have three kids. 
I have uh, a lot going on in my oh, podcast. Yes. I'm basically this is a different way for me to touch people, and and it's actually you know we got like six thousand, maybe four thousand, five thousand people out there that are able to kind of you know listen and and it, it's able to help, and it's I, I'm I'm focusing my energy towards that because I believe my songs can can touch certain people, but some people don't like rap first of all, and some people don't really have the time to listen to music that but they like podcasts. But podcast is affecting people from my my age ranges from. 18 all the way to like 70 you know what i mean a 70 year old person might not want to listen to a christian rap song even though it might be christian right <laughs> so i have a really limited base but with the christian and conspiracy podcast i i can hit your your fan base and and christian fan base and and i can hit all these people and i can actually you know teach them you know wake them up so it's it's a different energy and i and i try to focus it on that but i brandon is awesome bro he's gonna be on my show too on the 26th and shout out to him Shout out to the fittest flat earther. Shout out to uh, all these different people out there. Uh, Legends. From a metal podcast. Uh, shout out to them. I know they shouted me out on your show, which is amazing. I'm just a regular guy and we're all just regular vessels that, that God is using, you know. Shout out to all them. I know they're probably going to listen to this. And um, shout out to Legit Bat Podcast. Uh, Mark Steves. Fam my family thinks I'm crazy. Dangerous World Podcast. All of you guys got me, actually gave me the, uh, the opportunity to be on your guys' show. And it actually... This is what it turned out to be, which is amazing. But if you would like, I would like to be on your show at some point, uh, as long as you're okay recording at this time. And I could do a whole biblical cosmology sermon, bro, and show people what the Bible says. Uh, and, and you know, I, I have a whole sermon <clears throat> on it, and people usually it does really well on different shows. Oh, yeah, brother. I would love to that we pass by. Right now I have June also. I have for June, after mid-June, I have some dates available. The thing is I only do my podcast. Heliopsychosis on Sundays because I have my people uh, at that yeah. time, my guests, my panel, my community who follow my stuff. You remember when you came to my podcast last time when Alex yeah. was on? Yeah. That is the time I do my podcast. If there's a way we could figure it out, even for an hour and a half, whatever you could, okay. I do that podcast for two hours in video format, live, right? So if we can work out some dates, uh, uh, I'll send you the dates where I have available for June. If we can, I don't know what time is that for you, but if we can work it out, brother, I would, I would love to, for sure. I okay. was, I wanted to have you too, brother, because we already spoke about that. For sure. Um, I'll try Sundays. I usually work, so that'll be tough. I'll have to take a day off for it, but at some point just, uh, we'll connect bro and let's make it happen. And I'll go over a, All a right. earth. And I think that'll be great for your audience to understand that everything you're saying and everything that, that, that we're, we're saying, it actually connects to a biblical. So it's actually there. And in all the other information that you have, I think it'd be a great show. So we'll do that, man. We'll do it, brother. Oh, yeah. First off, I want to say thank you for all your hard work, man. And, and everything that you're doing, I know that you're just trying to find the truth and, and you're very passionate and you have all these uh, documentaries and, and um, I, I'd also like at some point to make a uh, biblical earth, uh, uh, documentary man i don't know if if you if you want to if you're interested in maybe helping with something like that but i think that would definitely be much needed i have a lot of biblical flat earthers that are pastors and that are uh that are big in the industry right now that i think that we can make a, a great movie and, and they don't have something like that yet or just a bunch of different people coming together making it but let me know if you're interested or if you can if you can help in any way for that and, and we'll i'll pray about it brother the same way as we, i am doing with brandon brother yeah, I'm open for everything, brother, to help the community in every way, in whichever way to get the truth ahead, brother. So, uh, you know, so that's the best part, uh, connecting to all our brothers, right? That's how the unity and connection together makes something, uh, manifest something beautiful, right? Yeah. The flatten the curve happened because people, we people just combined our energies together and focus on something to create something amazing, for the people to open up the eyes, right? So there are a um, lot of, I'll tell you, brother, a lot of Christian people woke up with that flat in the curve. You won't believe of it. Of course. But it's really oh, I there, believe brother. it, bro. I, I totally believe it. And that's, I believe that because, because once you see that and then you go and dig in the Bible, you look at Genesis in a, a whole different way. So I really oh, yeah, believe brother. it, man. And I'm going to be praying for you. Um, I do like to end every podcast in prayer. So I'll be praying, you know, I'll be praying Oh, yes, for you brother. Absolutely, so let's brother. Let's do that. So, Father God, in the oh, name yeah. of Jesus, we appreciate everything you do for us. I just want to say if you could protect, protect uh, his journey, 
everything that he's doing. Vic is doing some amazing things. You know, he's making uh, documentaries. He's making podcasts. He's trying to expose the enemies, right? In Ephesians 5.11, you say to expose the enemies, expose the evil. You want you want uh, everything that's done in secret is going to come out in the open. So we want to expose these people that are doing these evil things. All we're trying to do, Lord, is bring people closer to your creation. You know, everything that you say in the Bible, uh, we're trying to bring everybody closer to understand that they could see how beautiful everything is and, and, and that you made everything for us because we are special. You made and we want to have a relationship with you, Lord. So I just want to ask if you could please bless Vika and his journey, put a legion of angels around him, protecting him because he, he is definitely uh, exposing some stuff that people do not like. I know them doing the same. So protect me as well, Lord, if you can. Anybody that's listening out there that um, that needs a supernatural help, Lord, that are in, in bad positions. We were speaking about people that are that are that are just trying to eat, find their next meal, Lord. Please put a healing hand on them and bless them with their next meal and bless them uh, in their life if you can, Lord. And uh, help us to do what we need you to, need us to do. Let us be vessels for you, Lord. Let, let Vicka be a vessel for, for you and for everything that you need done, Lord. So thank you so much for everything you do for us. Thank you for the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother, thank amen, you, bro. Thank you. What an amazing you, show. What an amazing show. Everybody that's listening, if you could, uh, check out uh, Flatten the Curve. Check out the Mechanical Realm. Check out the Heliopsychosis podcast. If you just go to uh, just this, basically you can just uh, go to YouTube and put Vika Draziv. I'll actually have the links down below, um, and you can you can see all these uh, different beautiful documentaries that he's made. Any last words for the audience, bro? Before we go, uh, thank you so much for having me, brother. That was an awesome conversation. For definitely for more, uh, I'm absolutely waiting for you to be on Heliopsychosis too, and to all the listeners, amazing listeners there too. Yes. Uh, feel the divine within and yes and spread that light thank you so much for this awesome podcast josh monday podcast guys uh, see you guys soon thank you brother all right thank you and everybody that's listening god bless you